that Brother Myrick sing a song before he starts. Why don't we just stand? Let's lift our hands as he come and invite the presence of the Lord into this adult Bible study. Let's worship him. Thank God for being here this morning. And uh, y'all worship with me as I sing this song. Those valleys to 
How many is glad to have Brother Urban teaching for us this morning? Let's make him welcome right now with a hand clap of praise. We got it. Thank you. I don't do enough of this to learn these things. Amen. Good to see you folks this morning. Appreciate the Holy Ghost, the Word of the Lord. And I would like to turn this morning to the good Word of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12, if you will. I won't keep you standing long. Hebrews 12. Amen. Thank you again, Brother Burks, Sister Burks, this church, church family. For our guests here this morning, if you're a visitor, thank you for being here. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and greet them and relax. I like to break the ice a little bit with music and song, and it's Old Testament, but it works. And Brother Kelly, Mark, and his wife are ministers of music, and they've always blessed me for a long time. Amen. Good to see you. Hebrews 12. I respect our local ministry, all of you pastors and retired men and women. Amen. Brother Royer, Brother Burks. I want to say this, and I believe it's inspiration. Uh, Brother and Sister Royer, a blessing great blessing to this church and will continue to be because I pray to that effect. The Lord keep them here to perfect the saints and help Brother Burks here. Brother Burks Sr., I appreciate the word that you dispense here. Brother Burks Sr., the United States, the world needs your ministry. I don't know why I was in prayer this week and I just know this. The world needs his ministry, his, the word of God that he teaches and preaches. Amen. I really believe that. I'm a local home missionary, and I know my ministry. I believe in what I'm supposed to do and what I'm supposed to be. I have a limitation. Amen. But we're blessed with men and women here, Sister Dalton and others. My Lord, have mercy. You have been a blessing to me and mine, and I appreciate it. Me and my wife talk about it and discuss it often amen hebrews 12 verse 1 sister urban you give me that little signal when i get long-winded amen i uh, i said i wasn't gonna keep you standing long i received a call from another state i did from a preacher recently and he was perplexed and this really happened recently i told brother burks about it and Brother Broger, I believe, he said, Brother Urban, there's something going on here. He said, in the middle of the teaching and preaching, that if it's 12 noon, we have people getting up and leaving, walking out at 12 noon. I said, well, it's, it's here too. It's, it's, <laughs> it's all over the, you know, the, the world, and I believe that's why that the Lord has sent me here today to investigate and touch on some of this stuff amen i'm a a specialist i know that and i just tend to certain things and when it's done i may not preach again for months that's okay amen i just want to fit in and be a blessing uh, if i can't help you i don't want to do anything else hebrews 12 verse 1 wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race. You wore your tennis today, your tennis shoes. It's you that don't know what's going on. Well, that's what I have here this morning. Looky here. And uh, they, someone in, advised me to be different. These were on clearance, these tennis shoes I have on. And uh, 
one of the spirit-filled believers this morning said, I can see why they were on clearance. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But that's what we have here. They be, won't be worn again until next year. Amen. Laying aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily cling to us. Let us run with patience the race. I'm in a race today. I know this. Looking unto Jesus. And that's what we have to do in America today. I am heartbroken. I am hurt. I am angry. I, am, I have mixed emotions today because of what's going on in Israel and around Jerusalem. And I can't really feel real good today. But I'm looking unto Jesus, Brother Royer. The author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Would you pray with us? In Jesus' name, we thank you today for every visitor, for the church of the living God, for our ministry. Lord, help us today. Bless Israel today in Jerusalem. Rebuke the wicked people, Lord. Help us today in Jesus' name. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much for standing. I want to speak to us today on this subject simply. An empty plate. An empty plate. Or a vessel. Amen. An empty plate. Or a vessel. You ever heard the old term, my plate's full? Yeah. Brother Irvin, I've got a plate that's full. My plate's full. My cup's running over. Yeah. And a lot of times it's not with joy. Yeah. Amen. But in Luke chapter 21, Jesus spoke of the destruction of Jerusalem, and he also described a social and economic climate of the end time, and I really believe we're there. Luke 21 and verse 36, if you please. Luke 21 and verse 34. Let's start with 34. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with surfeiting, surfeiting, and drunkenness, and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare, as a snare, shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Amen. The subject today is having a full or a running over plate. Amen. Luke 17, if you will. Luke 17, verse 26. Luke 17 and verse 26, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah, listen to that, until the day that Noah, we're in that era, I believe, now. All that's going on, all of the ease that's going on in America. While there's a World Series going on today in baseball, also there's a Gentile nation surrounding Jerusalem. Yes. Amen. There's war in Israel. Yes. I know you've heard it or you might, but that's what sometimes puts us to sleep. Amen. Is that redundant phrase or I've told you so, and we just, we just don't pay attention anymore. Amen. But he said, and the flood came and destroyed them all. 
Likewise also as it was in the day of Lot. They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Amen. In Luke 21, Jesus said, Watch and pray always and be ready for His return. And to do this, you and I have to have an empty plate or an empty vessel. Amen. Amen. We live on the Gulf of Mexico. We enjoy the sea breezes, the southern breezes, or I do. Every evening at my evening sacrifice, I'm out in front of the house under a big post oak tree on my golf cart, and there I pray and I worship and I enjoy the sea breezes, the wind that blows, and I worship there. And and I, I just enjoy that. My wife's in her, her, uh, her little chair there by the window, and she enjoys just the breeze of the air conditioner that's blowing across <laughs> her, her. And uh, that's her business. I, I've had to learn to just uh, deal with that and leave it alone. Don't, I'm not going to dig no hole here, Brother Hill, so don't hand me no shovel. Amen. Just leave it alone. Amen. Let her enjoy that because I enjoy mine. These southern breezes, the flow of the wind, the breeze, the wind blows. Did you know this? Where there's least resistance. What happened in Lake Charles and Brother Rob in different places when those hurricanes blow through and all of those buildings and those signs and those gas pumps and all of those things were just disintegrated by the breeze and by the wind and the wind the breeze just pushed things over amen sometimes it took a while but it would work them loose and it would push them over amen i'm going somewhere with this just hang on the wind that blows where there is the least resistance John chapter 3, if you please. John 3. Amen. Thank you that you folks that are coming in. Thank you for the visitors, our guests today. Amen. John chapter 3 and verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees, of the professional teachers there in Jerusalem named Nicodemus. He was an important person. He was a ruler of the Jews. The same, he came to Jesus by night. There's a reason he came by night. Amen. There's a reason people slip in and out of church. Amen. They don't want association right now, but I believe they'll come on in by and by. And he said unto him, Rabbi, or we know that you're a teacher come from God. For a man, no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with him. Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily. In other words, Nicodemus, settle down here and pay attention. Let me talk to you a little bit. I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said to him, well, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And this is exactly what some folks in our community, this is the way they look at what we preach and teach. They're just in a carnal state of mind. It, it's going to take the Holy Ghost in intercession. Amen. And conviction on our part and to pray. Amen. Until God gets their attention. Jesus answered, verily, verily. I say to you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Do you hear that? That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. 
Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. I stood in that Pentecostal church some 50 years ago at Bonweir, Texas, and I was just as dumb as I could be. And I gripped the back of that pew, and I did not have a clue what that preacher was talking about. But I could not deny what I felt and what I saw. I could not deny the tongues and the interpretation. I could not deny the feeling, that wind that was blowing through that old church and that rustled the leaves and the limbs of this sinner man. I was under the influence of alcohol, but the Holy Ghost blowed through those bottles of whiskey. The Holy Ghost blowed through those cases of beer and touched my heart and convicted me to come down to an altar and ask forgiveness for my sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's my personal testimony. I'm supposed to do that. Amen. I believe this more now than I did then. I believe this truth. Marvel not, he said. He said, you hear the sound of the wind, but you can't tell where it come from. I didn't know what was slipping up behind me in that Pentecostal church. I didn't know what it was I felt. I looked around. I was suspicious. What's going on here? But I could sense a power and a moving into that church. And I saw your grandmother do a two-step out across the front of the church with her eyes closed. Then didn't follow. I saw Sister L. Jordan dance up and down the aisles. Sometimes on one foot, it seemed like. And she just gave herself unto the Lord with her eyes closed. And the spirit of worship as the Holy Ghost blew and moved across that sanctuary. And it got hold of me, of my cold heart, of my unfeeling heart. Up to that time, I had become a man that could not shed a tear anymore. I couldn't feel hurt. I wanted to hurt people. I actually hated people. And I voiced that opinion. What's going on in the state of Maine? It's just the beginning of the sorrows. But Jesus said, when you see these things, you watch and you pray. And be accounted worthy to escape. Amen. I pray for this church. I pray for our pastor and family every day. I pray for protection around this church. And I believe the Lord Jesus has dispatched protection here. I pray for an umbrella. Amen. Of protection and grace. He said, you can't tell where it come from and where it's going. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit of God. He described the unseen but felt presence of the wind. This wind that I'm talking about, the Spirit of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God. God is a, is a spirit. Our, our pastor has been teaching us about the Spirit of God. It flows and it moves and it blows through open and empty places easily where there is least resistance. Amen. The Holy Ghost will blow more easily through an empty spirit or heart of a person. Amen. Amen. I remember almost, almost 50 years ago, I was a young pastor uh, in another church. I was a missionary, and I had taken this group of people, and God was blessing but I was having a time I I had a ankle that was broken three places I think sister Burks was six years old five or six years old sister Stanley was a young lady my son Joshua was a young man and uh, we'd moved into this city and that old 77 blue Dodge van and without AC I don't know how we, my wife said we're not going there again. 
and uh, but we made it. We were smaller people, and we were tougher then. You know, 50 years ago, I was a skinny little old thing, and uh, other folks were too. Amen. Uh, I've learned these uh, political phrases, Brother Rowe, you how to say it without just pointing a finger, you know, and uh, that still can generate animosity. Amen. I don't want to be political with the gospel. There was no money, you know, and I worked. I, I was doing roofing and remodeling, and I was a pretty good carpenter. And I remember coming in from work, and I would hop on one leg from the truck that evening to the house, and I would crawl to the porch because I had a broke leg. But I was pastoring the church. Well, where were them tithe prayers? We had basically one. And we rejoiced over that envelope. Amen. Amen. Dairy Queen was, I, I know about using the local dairy treat, was the main thing. Sister Kim Mark was five or six years old then. Her and her daddy and mama was down there helping us in that missions church. And this young lady that was up here playing and singing a while ago. Dairy Queen or Dairy Treat was the main thing, or Whataburger, you know. Oh, it was wonderful to go there. Steakhouses, I uh -uh, never did go unless there was a big invitation from out of town. We just didn't do, we didn't have the money. That's so strange. Now, some of you don't have a clue what I'm talking about, except you may maybe a single mother with children. And you know what I'm talking about. And I feel for you. Amen. Or a single dad. There I was. Lord have mercy. Had a church and some good people. Had We had uh, utility bills. We had all of this. And uh, we were paying uh, for things there at the church. And, and everything. And I remember I was in my office. And I was on my face on the floor, Brother Royer, in that office. I mean, on the carpet, flat out. I'd been there I don't know how long. I have, and I'm just saying this because it'll help some of these new converts because we'll see it here, I believe, before it's all over. I have prayed all night long. You say, how could you do that? I don't know. But I, I've done it more than one time in different places. And that's not bragging. It was just a, a, an urgency a, 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 when there's a crisis in the church. Amen. Or, or, and a crisis, amen, in the family, you, you know. And I believe if, if, if pastors and evangelists get a hold of this and we begin to pray and seek God, the Lord will draw these people and these souls and they'll walk into the church and they'll pray through to the gift of the Holy Ghost. But I was on my face and I said, Lord, I, I don't know what to do. I had cried, uh, Sister uh, Renee, until I, I couldn't cry anymore. And I know you've done that before, and you and Sister Vonnie and others that lost your spouse. And I respect you ladies more than you would ever know. The strong women of the Lord. Amen. I couldn't weep anymore. I said, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I did make a little old rash statement while I was laying there with my nose on the carpet, and I, you know, the wet carpet in front of me. And I said, Lord, I, I ought to just... I ought to just run some of these people off. If I wasn't in such a condition as I'm in, I'd just run them off. Just tell them to leave and make the church better. I'm hurt, God. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He does that. He still does that. The Holy Spirit spoke to me there on that floor. In front of my nose, I didn't know. I, I didn't see it before. There was a rubber band laying there. And I lay there kind of in the semi-darkness, and I looked at this rubber band. And he said, pick it up. And I picked up this rubber band. And he said, when you become as this rubber band, there will be healing and recovery. He said, I sent you here, and you're hurt and you're wounded because of your wounds and your hurt. I sent you here because of that, this church. Is hurt, and this church is wounded, and you are the man I sent with a broken leg and a wounded spirit, but you have the gift 
of the Holy Ghost and strength in your body to preach the gospel, even wounded. Amen. Man, you talk about repent. I carried, I got one in my billfold, Brother Burke, senior, a rubber band that reminds me. Often I'll see it, Brother Hill, when times are tough. There's something going on. Here's what you need to do. Find you a place to pray and seek my face and stay there until you get an answer. Hey, don't do it on a high and don't do it on a low. Amen. He said, my sheep know my voice. They won't follow a stranger. I practice that, Brother Allison. I believe that with all of my heart. I don't do anything till I hear from him. He's big enough to talk to me. Sometimes through his word, sometimes through a saint, sometimes through a child. Through a child, yes, sir. About a year ago, I got frustrated at my wife, and I just turned and I popped off. I didn't cuss. I, I, I had an art at cussing when I was a sinner. I didn't cuss. I just said something I shouldn't have said. It was cruel. And when I did, there was a little old, about a five-year-old, six-year-old, seven-year-old grandson, Preston, stepped out from behind Nanu, his grandmother, Brother Burks, and he said, Pop, don't you talk to Nanu like that no more. And he was ready for battle. <laughs> you know what I saw, Brother Rose? Jesus Christ emanated from him. And I had to go outside because I began to weep. Brother Allison, in here. Oh, God, this old man, this flesh. <laughs> Brother, Brother Holloway, this old flesh. Sometimes you'll throw that hard hat on that job. I, you couldn't pay me to do your job. I know too much about it. But we need you, Brother Kelly and others. I don't want your job. I would work for you, but I don't want your responsibility. I don't want to be a wife. No, sir, a husband. Anymore like I used to be. I couldn't handle it now. I'm too old. Amen. I'm happy where I am in this season of life the Lord's given me. I'm talking about an empty vessel or an empty plate today. Praise God. Brother Burks, hold this. There's several of them there, but just hold them. That's a small plate, isn't it? God deals with empty emptiness. Amen. Look at Psalms, if you please. Look at the book of Psalms. Psalms 34 and verse 18, if we have it. He said, the Lord is near to them that are of a broken heart, and he saves such as be of a contrite spirit. I've always had trouble with being contrite, tender, tender. Psalms 51 and 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. What can I do to get, get God's attention? I can't get God's attention. How can I be like that? Be contrite and get broken? Find a place or the ability, fasting, prayer, the word, saying I'm sorry, forgive me. I remember the first time after I was saved, Brother Royer, that I had to ask a man to forgive me. It choked up. I, 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 he said, what's wrong with you? I said, I, 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 need, I, need, to I need to say something, Brother Rob. Just me and him in a pickup. Four o'clock in the morning, he has his Schlitz beer there sitting in his seat on the way to work. And I had just been delivered from it, and I, had, I was trying to ask him to forgive me for something I'd said. And finally it came out. And he was speechless because he had heard, never heard me broken and contrite. Amen. But it's time we dump some junk, you know, lay aside some of this weight that we hear about in Hebrews. Amen. Some of you is plate. You got stuff there. And I understand raising kids a little bit. You know, I've had three. I'm still helping a little way to help them grow up. But I got grand six grandchildren now. Oh yeah. While I'm there. Remember that rubber band? 
brother, you got it coming. That hair and that, that, I wish I could grow one, but I can't. The little prophet was at my house recently. You know who the little prophet is? Jensen, brother Jensen Birch, the little prophet. I was sitting there, and I was feeling good and elevated, brother Morgan, and he was doing a, his little notebook, whatever that is he does, and he has an art like my wife does. You can't, you can't read him sometimes. And he looked over at me, and I was just feeling re- all puffed up, and he said, Pop, I said, what? He said, you got a gumbo gut. <laughs> and he went back to his tablet. I said, okay. Could I deny it? I better stand this way. I better, that's why I keep my coat buttoned up. I'm at a season, and it's tough. And I'm expanding, Brother Stanley. I'm not getting taller. Did you know that? And then he also said, Pop, you've got real big ears. He told somebody else that. Well, when you get older, your ears continue to grow. Did you know that in your nose? One of these days when I get 100, that nose will be way down here. <laughs> That's true. Sister Janice knows that. Not that she's, <laughs> she's a medical <laughs> student. <laughs> she's a medical person. And uh, others here. Yes, other nurses, we appreciate our medical field that's represented here, our teachers. Amen. I see our brothers and sisters from Georgia. They said, what in the world's going on here? <laughs> Amen. This is how we stay in the church, is basic teaching. It's okay to, you know, Brother Outlaw always told me, my pastor, he was an outlaw. That was his name. He said, Brother Irvin, I don't care how high you jump and shout. As long as when your rubber hits the road, you walk straight. That's what he would tell me. And Brother Burks and these other ministers are teaching us, amen, how to walk and live right. But here we go. I can't suffer what he suffered in his physical body. And I, can, I can't empathize with a lot of people. I can sympathize and I pray for people. But, you know... Our plates, see, he, he had to reposition that plate because it's getting too full, too much stuff in it. It's, you know, it's not empty. And see, our God, the Holy Spirit, Sister Dalton, has to work its way through all of that stuff. Yeah. The wind blows where it is able. And where there's least resistance, yeah. it blows the hardest. Can it blow this morning? There's days, Sister Royer, thank God for your ministry. Yeah, there's days that it can't blow through me. And I end up in the evening usually repenting and crying there under that oak tree because I didn't give the Lord five minutes of that day to blow in my spirit and my attitude. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So here we go. Remember that elastic? When you become like that, here we go. Now it's piling up. Brother, Hill, I'm, I don't think you'll mind. Brother Hill's been remodeling his home. And I see him, and I ask, I ask him off, and I can tell just by looking and the way he's walking. I said, he's, he's got it going on, buddy. I can't function like he does. We have people like that. I'm not like that. I'm more, quote, laid back. Brother Allison, man that managed millions, probably a billion dollars worth of of stuff at the refineries where he retired from. Brother Kelly Myrick and guys like you. Brother Mark retired here from a refinery in different places that managed millions and hundreds of millions of dollars daily and weekly under the stress and all of this kind of stuff. I wasn't able to do that. Mine's more basic kind of living, and I appreciate it. But they can't do some things that I do. Amen. I can still climb a tree. 
I can grow corn. I can. I can grow roses. God gave me that. I talked to roses. I just lost everything in this drought. You know what I did? One morning I got frustrated looking at those twigs. The garden I'd planted my wife by her easy chair there at the window. The uh, tulip tree. The rose bushes. They all dead. I got on that John there and I took off around there and I dropped that blade and I plowed all of that stuff up. And I sat over there a little while later, you know, an hour later, Brother Morgan, after a cup of coffee, a drink of water, Brother Barrow, and I said, why did I do all of that? What's wrong with me? What got a hold of me? Huh? Impulsive. That drive. Amen. We're, we're Westerners. We're Americans. We're ferocious. Amen. And there it is. It's piled up. You know, some people's got. There he is. He said it. I didn't say anything to this pastor. You got bigger plates. Huh? How big is yours? Mine's a little saucer, I think. You know what? The Lord gives me grace to control all of that stuff. I can't be like some of these guys I mentioned. Amen. I can't deal with children like some of you ladies. My wife was gifted. I believe she raised some wonderful daughters and a son. They love her. Amen. I dealt with my children differently than her, but God used her in a woman's way. By the way, uh, these, these tennis shoes, they were in the men's department. I said it. I'm a man, M-A-N, I'm M-A-L-E. I don't want my wife in a muscle shirt. Lifting weights, and those, uh, she lift that gumbo pot, and that's, that's all, that's <laughs> and stir that, those beans, and brother Allison, those no, great northers, did you cook them? Okay, he was going to bring me some great northers. He's a cook, Lord have mercy. But I, you know, these came from the men's section, and uh, they were on clearance. And, amen. <laughs> Brother Stanley, I can't handle what you do. I want him to go to try to describe what he does, he, he and his wife and their profession. Amen. It's beyond me. But somebody has to do it. I can't be president. I'm not that kind of material. You heard that. But I'll guarantee you, you give me 24 hours, and some things will be fixed. Of course, I'll be assassinated. But, <laughs> but they'll protect me for 20. And there's some of this mess, quote, mess, I'll straighten out. Yes, sir. I know some of you are looking at me a little odd because you've been on some of these news channels too long. But there's, a, there's millions of us out here that are still men and uh, women. I want this to be known. I've been going to put some, I, you know, I run some signs in my pasture for several years. But now it's really dangerous. So I'm not doing it. Except maybe for a politician I might. Amen. But some people have bigger plates. Look at here, Brother Burks. And they'll hold a whole lot more. A whole lot more. These are brand new, used, I mean brand new socks. <laughs> Look at there. And some of you can handle, you can sit down if you get tired of standing. And if you want to preach, you got this, this is your microphone. Amen. But here we are this morning. We need to dump some junk. Lay aside every weight. I won't go there. Sister Irvin, what I got left? Ten minutes? 
maybe nine minutes. Amen. I won't go there in the scripture, but I'll just tell you where it's at. In Luke 7, verse 36, Jesus had an invitation to this important person's home, and he went there to eat and to drink. And while he was there, the Bible said there was a sinner woman came off the street. You didn't do that in that culture. You still don't over there. Well, you wouldn't even do it at my house. She just slipped in and eased on up beside Jesus. And the way I like the way they eat over there. They still do it. I got to drink some Egyptian tea with some Egyptians, Brother Royal, one time in Kuwait. And I sat, I squat, I can't squat too good. <laughs> they made some tea while we were working. And then you have to drink their tea or you'll offend them. And I, I, So they sat down and squatted down, and I did too. I like the way they do that stuff. And you just kind of lay over like that with your feet out, drinking that tea. And, buddy, it's good, and it's full of sugar. Amen. And there she was. She slipped in, and his feet, she began to weep and cry. And the tears dropped on his feet. It was a heathen, a heathen, a sinner, just a heathen custom, a pagan custom. Amen. It wasn't a Jewish custom, not with the tears. They're supposed to wash your feet when you come in to visit. I, I'm not really into that. I don't care about doing that. But uh, anyway, and as the tears wet his feet, she began to dry his feet with the hair of her head. And all of a sudden, the circumstances change just like it would here this morning if somebody would become broken and contrite and surrender amen that spirit that heart to our Lord Jesus Christ and and that man that invited Jesus to that event said if Jesus knew who this was oh if he just knew that she was a sinner and Jesus said hey I have something to say to you, Simon. You're wrong. Amen. I came in here and you didn't even wash my feet. You didn't even basically welcome me. And now she's washing my feet with her tears. Finally, at the end of the situation, he said, Woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Get up and go in peace. Amen. And here we are today. Jesus is in this place. Knocking on a heart's door. Amen. Inviting someone. Said, let me come in and I'll do the same for you. I'll help you this morning. I'll do something to bless you here today. Amen. Who's it for today? Brother Burks? All of this stuff. What, it, what, what is it? Nicotine? Drugs? Man, there's a new one coming from uh, Europe, I believe now, a drug. And it's, it's, it's more terrible than anything they've ever seen. They just use some of it in Israel, they say, for those terrorists. And then other people here. Is it finances? Is it credit cards? You know, is it unemployment? Amen. I remember one time years ago, I was unemployed, and I was always willing to work. I still am. And I was just in between jobs, and I needed a job, so... That, that morning, I went out into the woods behind the house, and I spent, I spent eight hours that day in prayer. I would come back in to the house and get a drink of water, and I'd go back out because I needed a job. I had three babies I had to feed and take care of, and my wife, and the light bill to pay, and, and an old uh, automobile. And I, I spent my eight hours of prayer. I didn't know where it was coming from. I just knew I, this is all I, that's all I knew to do was to ask Jesus to help me. And before sundown that evening, Brother Barrow, three employers, one came by from Kirby Lumber Company. One supervisor came by and knocked on the door and offered me a job. Two other, two other employers called that evening, Brother Allison, offered me a job. What did I do? I picked the job that would allow me to stay in church it paid a little less, but I could feed my family and go to church and live for God. Amen. I'm talking about an empty vessel this morning. 
an empty vessel. Amen. What will we do with what the Lord has given us the responsibility today to be adults in this era, in this time? He said to watch and pray when you see all of these things begin to happen. Could we stand here this morning? He said to watch and pray. I may be cutting this way too short. I don't know. But I was told to deliver that message to some people here this morning. Maybe you're overburdened and you're carrying too much. Amen. I know how that is. I know how that is. I guess, and I have to tell you this, if you'll live for the Lord, if you'll live for the Lord and obey his word, God will bless you. I remember when I paid tithing on $100 a week, I was working pup wood when I was a young man. And I, I would draw $100 a week there on a job, and I paid my $10 tithing. Man, it was tough. It was hard to do, but that's what I was taught. I gave my $1 in every offering, Brother Burks. And I didn't understand it. Everybody else did, so I gave a dollar. And then one time the Lord dealt with me and said, you can give two if you want to. So <laughs> I did. And, you know, things began to grow and mount up. And God blessed us. And I was looking at my place like I do now, Brother Mark Hines and Sister Hines. Y'all are a blessing. I appreciate y'all so much. Amen. And uh, at my place out here where I live in Holly Springs, everything I have is paid for that I know of except for the light bill and the things like that. It wasn't always like that. But the Lord saw fit to bless and help us, me and my wife. Amen. Everything I have belongs to him. He's loaned me these things. Amen. Everything I have is a blessing from the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to turn this service to Brother Burks. Amen. And uh, the Holy